Hi folks, we are at DeBolt Machine with Mr. Paul DeBolt. Hello. Paul has been a great role model for us in terms of tool and die maker skills, and you're making your training plates. Yeah, we're just we're tree panning a hole in them to speed it up and it saves material. Is that heavy? No, I'm just getting old. <laughs> Hi folks, we are back. You might recognize this shop. We are at DeBolt Machine with Mr. Paul DeBolt. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. If you haven't seen it, we've done some awesome videos here. Paul has been a great role model for us in terms of really, really those sort of tool and die maker skills. And you're making your training plates. Yeah, we're just we're tree panning a hole in them to speed it up and it saves material, which you'll see that as soon as we go through all this. And it's cool though to me because number one, you get left with a perfectly good usable slug, whether you want to use that or sell it. And ironically, while it takes a lot of horsepower, you're probably able to better dial in the service footage because you're not handling that center line. That's right. Cut. You don't, you know, it takes a lot less power to run it because it doesn't have that center that's running real slow on a drill. If you think about the chisel point on the drill, it's practically not turning. It's pushing the metal out of the way. Uh, on a tree pan, you don't have that, but you, but you do have, and you've got a positive cut. Um, it doesn't take a, as much power as a regular drill for the size of the drill. So you can build, drill big holes and save all that material out of the center uh, the company I worked for many years ago had these tree pan drills, and they thought it was a great idea because they took the cores out and made other parts out sure. of them, you know, which you can see, well, wow, they're not blowing away all those chips. And, 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 which you, you got to scrape out of the machine. You oh, yeah. Deal with the waste you know, and, and, yeah. And the, big, the, the problem with them, though, is if you try to use it in a CNC machine, the slug is marooned in the drill, so you just couldn't. Uh, oh. If it if it indexes around on a turret, you got that slug bouncing around right. in the drill. Uh, it, you don't want to do that because it could fall out of there at any time. So it doesn't lend itself to CNC machining very handy. I'll, st I'll still stay though for the rest of the video. <laughs> well, uh, what they, what they did though, they took and, and specialized turret lays, big turret oh, lays, yeah? and put different size drills on there, and they would run production just drilling the hole prepare it for the CNC machines. Got it. So then they take those slugs and stack them over where they're going to do different parts mm -hmm. and make those other parts out of the slugs and then take those prepared parts onto the machines. Much like I think you buy uh, prepared uh, aluminum blocks or yeah. you can buy it with the right. dovetails cut on it. Yeah. Same thing only the lathe. You know, we're preparing it because we're punching holes in there and all of them have the holes. And you know, that's a time consuming process. And a normal drill, of course, it, it you can buy nice drills these days that can drill a big hole and blow everything into chips. But like you say, you have the disposal problem. Even if you take the cores and just want to scrap them, the value of them right. is so much greater. It's You'll get significantly more out of scrapping Oh, yeah, bar. yeah. Right. And most of the material they were cutting at that time was 4140 and 4340. And you're talking about expensive stuff to right. be throwing right. down a trash can. So... Um, that that's how they got started and you know we got a couple projects in here that we needed a big hole in and if you think about well I'm going to drill a two inch hole or an inch and a half hole in here and I have to bore it out to four inches how much time does that take boring is difficult especially on a manual machine chips are going everywhere they get on you they burn you if you can get close to your finished size, we just happen to have uh, several parts in here. This is a three and three quarter drill, mm -hmm. basically. I, I know it's a metric size, but it's close to three and three quarter. Uh, the inside core is, is two and a quarter is what you end That's up crazy. with. So you're, you're in essence, when you drill with this thing, you're, you're t drilling uh, an inch of material out. So if you think about uh, uh, sure. taking an inch off the diameter of your uh, of the part you're talking about a lot of horsepower to do that well this is positive insert i think we talked about that when we talked about inserts some mm -hmm. time ago if you use positive inserts they're uh, a lot less horsepower intensive these two inserts actually overlap slightly mm -hmm. so they're not exactly cutting an inch by themselves you know half inch on each side but they overlap a little bit uh, they're they're like a uh, uh, if you look at them. It looks like a W insert. Yeah, that's right. It's just a positive W insert. They come in all kinds of configurations. Is it a W the same as you have in an OD turning? No. Tool? Okay. It, it's it's slightly different than that. I suspect, uh, and it's the grades are slightly different, probably because of the uh, purpose that you're you're using it okay. for. 
Uh, I've had some carbide drills in here that have the inserts all the way across and blow the whole hole sure. out. And the center insert always gets punished because of the surface footage is so poor on it. Uh, and sometimes that center insert is different, and it's a different grade for that reason. You don't have that problem here. This particular drill has inserts built into it. You can see there's a cartridge here. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has a screw in here. This one in particular has a little adjustment screw on the bottom here. Okay. So you can move this up and down, loosen this up. This hole was a little loose, and you can move this up and down so you don't have one of them contacting ahead of the sure. other one. So they need to contact at the same time. And then uh, this one here has got two screws in it right here, and it doesn't have an adjustment on it. It just stays static all the time. Now, they're on inserts here. The inserts are in inserts. <laughs> yeah. So if you blow one of these and it tears this thing up, you can take this out and the shank is preserved. Got it. Um, is that a purchased product or did you make the assembly? Well, the, uh, this piece I made, this is, this is Sandvix. Okay. Uh, these are Sandvix. And what, what they did at the company I worked, they made these big, 8-inch, you know. Wow. Um, and, and they'll cut they'll drill six feet deep or more. What they did is we made heads about that long, okay? And the head is what goes bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see on this particular one, there's a notch cut here. It's a chip clearance notch. And you can see where the chips have been floating around here and wearing that right there. Yep. This would be all the way up here. So it's about an eighth of an inch wore off of that one. After a while, they wear out. So then they had a couple bolts in here and a, a tongue on the inside. So you could pop that on there and put the bolts on. And you make the shanks any length you want. Sure. Sure. And take the head off, and if it goes bad, throw it away and put another one on there and just keep going. Because the shank doesn't get anywhere on it. Sometimes it gets some chip drag on it yeah. like that. But, uh, you know, you just put this up in the middle and put these two uh, chip gullets in there and put the head on there, and you can make them any size you want. And all you have to do, what they did was just buy the cartridges and the inserts off of Sandvik sure. and make them any size they want to adapt them any size. And, of course, us in the tool room, we made the heads... And the shanks. Yep. So it's anything they wanted. And you're, when you set this up, I would assume you care a lot about rigidity, but you're not necessarily using this to get itself incredible accuracies. If you need accuracy, you'd come in and, and bore it to finish size. That's right. Because this right. thing is still going to move on you some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this won't, uh, you know, won't cut a real, real accurate hole like some of the drills you can buy that they mm -hmm. can get a really nice hole. It's not designed for that. It's designed to get as big a hole in there in a hurry. Yep is what it's my. Got it. Now my machine is a 10 horse and um, when I drill some of the steels I do with it, I can't achieve uh, optimum uh, surface speed because I don't have enough horsepower in a high enough range. The power band yep. is not up in the higher range, yep. so it wants to stall a machine. So I, can't, I have to stay down in low gear, which I take it up into a maximum RPM in that low gear, which enables, this is a real fine balancing act on my particular machine because I don't have quite the horsepower necessary to drive one of these. Right. Uh, but what we wanted to achieve and, and, and what you want to do with carbide is, is, is uh, get the chips to break up. Okay. So uh, fortunately for us, and we, I talked to Sandvik about this and they told me to use these inserts because we want to break the chips up with a minimal amount of feed. This thing will feed a lot faster than I can feed it because I don't have the horsepower, horsepower. to drive it. Not, not an uncommon predicament though. You yeah. kind of kinda joke, but you buy the biggest machine you can afford and then the, the first thing you want to do is run a tool that's <laughs> more, de more designed for even a larger machine, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, you want to cheat. Right, you know, absolutely. You know, that, that's right. You want to cheat and, and, and you know, what you want to do is come up with creative ideas to maximize the effort of any equipment or sure. personnel you've got. And that's what this thing does as far as drilling holes. You get a big hole in a hurry. So what kind of sort of RPMs or service footage, and do you know well, feed this, per reps? Well, this, this particular machine, I can only run 250 RPM. Okay. And we're running at 5,000 speed. 5,000 feet per rev? Yeah. That's not yeah. bad. It's not bad, no. You but this thing, this thing will run about two or three times that if you wow. want it to. Uh, and, you know, of course, I have some other problems, too, that, that, they're, that are a problem with this. You should have as much coolant as you can get, mainly because the coolant runs in here, runs through the center, and then comes out and forces the Flush. chips out. Yeah, it's literally right. like an oil or like that's a that's right. right. Yeah, and the more pressure you've got in there on the coolant, the faster the chips come out, the faster you can drill the hole, and the yep. less pressure there is on the inserts and the whole nine yep. nine yards. The same same 
thing with any any carbide tool. Well, if you think about you're making an internal one inch cut at 5,000 feet per rev, yeah, that yeah. material's got to go somewhere. Yeah, it's huh. got to get out of there in a hurry. And you can see, you know, this is not that thick. And even right here, man, it's it's there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, so you think, well, there there can't be a whole lot of cutting pressure on this with just that that thin like that. You get in there and you start pushing on the on this, uh, you know, it's it's going to curl the chips here. Now we're going to be running iron, cast which, iron. Yeah, okay. when it when it when it chips, it, it breaks pretty good. This is this is uh, class forty, which is a better iron. Okay, but the uh, steel would be the same way. It actually makes chips very similar to anything you would see by turning. Okay. Okay. But you've got it. So I think about uh, your t traditional OD turning, you need to have an engagement or depth of cut relative to the nose breaker radius. But here that wouldn't be yeah, relevant. Yeah, you've got a radius actually in a point up here, right here okay. on the high spot. Okay. But, you know, it doesn't have a, a, and it's got radiuses on the tip, just like you were saying. It looks a lot like a normal insert. Mm -hmm. I mean, out here on this, this tip, they got a 30 second radius on there. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like a regular insert. And when you, when you run these, it usually cuts, let's see, I don't know if I, I changed it, turned these around, but, you know, it's cutting the full width of this yeah. thing. Uh, so, you know, nice thing about that, you know, we, we've talked about uh, using, of in, using bigger inserts and smaller inserts and why you use smaller ones instead of bigger sure. ones because you're wasting the cutting edge. These are utilizing the whole cutting edge, this so you're is not. Great. Yeah, there's for buying that that three. It looks like a three eighth inch IC. I mean, that's yeah. a good yield on that. Yeah, that's right. Carbide. Yeah, you know, and, and like I say, you know, you you uh, you can drill holes really quickly. Now, you know, um, I'm not running at optimum speed mm -hmm. because of the horsepower. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I can say about that. I mean, it should run up. Now we're running iron, which would be running slower. It should probably run about uh, 400 RPM, something like that. And like I say, you could probably run at 15,000 speed. It's incredible. Or, yeah, it, it'll 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 go through there like it's nothing. You, you think, wow, it's not no. But it, it, that's what makes you notice how much pressure you have to put on a regular drill. You know, you take uh, even these. These are allied. Yep. Sure. Uh, you know this this point here, man. It's 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 not turning there. You know that. I mean, it's just, it's just not. That material. That's right. And it and you don't have that to issue. And man, it takes a lot less power to do that. Yeah. But like we're talking about here, it, it don't. <laughs> you're talking about a real wide cut. Yeah. Still, there's yeah. no way to get around. Yeah, that. yeah. There's no way to get around. I mean, you can make this thinner. I don't know how because what if you made these smaller. I don't know uh, how the chips would escape. Sure, sure, it's know. a balance. If you're looking for uh, something fun to do, we've got PDF links to, the, I think, the 2015 Sandvik catalogs. There are processes and tools that, you, that humbly said you probably never heard of, like bar peeling, thread whirling, tree pan yeah. drilling. Yeah, yeah. And these are some of these are, are stock tools. They're just yeah. not what you think of. It. It's not a normal one-inch stick tool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just happened to know about this, and we, we, we wanted to increase the speed at which we drill holes. So this I love is, it. This is what we got. Now, this normally comes with a straight shank. Okay. Uh, big straight shank, as a matter of fact. And I made this piece to go on here to adapt at my tailstock. And what it does... There's a keyway on the bottom of the, the quill. It slides over the quill, and then there's a keyway, and there's just a couple of set screws here. Okay. So jack. normally you would actually run this on your cross slide. No, I, I don't. No, no, but Sandvik is, sells this as a product to run on the cross slide or on uh, the tail stop. Uh, they use, they, I think these are designed for a turret lathe, a big turret oh, lathe. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, because they just slide straight in. Now, you could put it on a CNC machine, but you have to stop the machine sure, and take sure. the slug out. Now, I made this to fit on the tail stock so it slides on there, tightens the set screws up. And we back this up so this is up against the face of the tail sure. stock so it stays square. And you can see that, you, you you know, you could look at that and say, well, boy, that ain't much holding it on there. Well, it for it doesn't have to because it's thrusting towards it's the tail axial. stock. It's right. not wanting to go bouncing around or anything like that. You don't want it doing that for sure on any drill anyway. Uh, so it, it's, it, it thrusts this way, or actually this way, but... Uh, <clears throat> so there's not much there to hold it on. Now we put a hole in here, and normally they have a hole in the side of this for mm -hmm. the coolant. Uh, and, a coolant and there's a coolant hole way down in the bottom there that comes so out. Flushing out the center of it. Okay. Yeah, it goes through the center and comes around and goes out the sides. And what we have is what we used to call a fence here. 
what this does is this goes on the chuck. Okay. Uh, so when you break through on the inside, this is up against the back of the part. So it pushes the slug into the drill. Yeah. So when you back the drill out, the drill carries the slug out of there instead of having the slug stuck in the Just, part. Right, right. We'll put this up on there and, okay. and put the quick disconnect on. I wanted to replicate, I don't have a quick disconnect for this. Mm -hmm. the, the same system, I don't know how familiar you are with, with the, the Allied system, okay? Oh, the rotating bushing. That yeah, you, you know, they got a fitting on here and they have quick disconnects for that. And then they got a bar in here so you can use it in a lathe mm -hmm. or, or a drill press. You know, of course, this is a drill press is not very common on these anymore. But uh, I wanted to use their system because I have some of their drills and I thought, well, I could use the same quick disconnect system as theirs is. But I'm not looking to have it turning. But it, I don't know. If, just so you, just so we're clear, though, this is effectively a poor man's through spindle coolant, where you can have a rotating tool that delivers. So yeah, it's a rotating yeah. sealed union that allows you to put. Yeah, coolant you know, a I find assembly. these a lot more efficient than a regular drill. You got more clearance here. You know, you can gr send these back and get them ground, or you grind them yourself. Yeah. And you, of course, you get it. You can see this one's a lot bigger. You get various sizes. Yeah. Well, it's actually a cool story. They call them TA drills, which yeah. was a quote unquote revolutionary idea when you were traditionally using solid high speed steel shank yeah. drills and they call them TA drills because it's a throwaway. Yeah. And you could have it reground but you can also just treat it's kind of like the same thing where you have a replaceable head here. You just have to deal with replacing or swapping out that tip. Yeah, well before we started getting these, uh where I used to work, they took these and they would grind this until it almost gets down to here and then they throw them away. Yeah. Cool. But, you know, these come in a straight shank like this and a spiral shank, depending on what kind of material you're drawing it. And, of course, different grades of yeah, insert. Yeah, you can buy, this is high speed. You can buy carbide tips for them and everything. If they got cobalt coatings. All oh, that yeah, fancy all stuff. kinds of coatings. I mean, they're nice. I think they're better than a regular high speed drill, you know. Yeah. People say, well, you can't grind it, but so many people can't grind anyway. You know, it just... Uh, and then those tips, they last a long time. Somebody's got a, a, a garage shop, they'll never wear the tip out. Right. So what I, I did with this machine is I made some modifications here. Uh, what we're going to use is the power feed to, to run our drill when we get the part set up here. And you can see these two tails on here. Put a couple bolts in here and here. Put these two tails in. I got three holes in here. So when we take our tail stock and push it up in here, I got a bridge that I put back here. I just got a couple of bolts stuck in here. I don't, not, I don't even bolt them up. So what it does is it pulls the tail stock like that. So you can go backwards and forwards. Now what I do, I've got a, a piece here in the center with a with a radius on it here so it's not pushing in one spot to try to keep it centered sure. up so it centers it up self centering that way this way when we come up here to start drilling all I have to do is engage the feed and it's drilling I love it and now what I do here is I tighten these up a little bit so I don't have this thing vibrating on the way so mm -hmm. we'll we'll tighten this bolt up and this up we don't want to tighten it up it's super a real tight. Fast, it's a real fine Yeah, adjustment. you just kind of go, eh, that seems pretty good enough. And, and if it vibrates, you go, well, maybe I'll tighten it a little bit. Yeah. And take the vibration out, and away you go. And then all you do is back her out. And so if you're watching this channel and you've never really even seen how a manual lathe works, it's actually really cool because you've got a motor that turns that chuck. That much you probably knew. But in this gearbox, you've got gearing that comes out onto these shafts down here. And you can control this manually, but you can also set the dials that control the feed rate of this cross slide relative to the rotation speed of the chuck. You see, this is sticking out a little bit here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much where all we got sticking in that drill. And I know that's not much, but like I said, we got the thrust is this way, so we don't have to worry about it. We just have to make sure we keep it stable. Now, I'll put a groove in the face of the part to start the drill with a face groove. Oh, interesting. To give it a... Yeah, get a start point. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much where we're at. So we'll move this out of the way temporarily. So I can get in here. Is that heavy? <laughs> no, I'm just getting old. <laughs> now you can see here is where the keyway is underneath here. Okay. 
and we just slide it on there. Oh, look at that. Okay, so you, you buy this part, you made this part. That's right, that's right. I made it to adapt there. Now you can buy these in different lengths, mm -hmm. different diameters, of course. I think uh, one of them is about 1200 bucks, which you say, well, that might be a little bit more than I want to spend, but when you start using one of them, you go, oh, if I had to uh, bore all that out, you go, this is too damn slow. <laughs> it's taking too long. Have you I, had any problems with this, either the body or the cartridge inserts? No. Because I mean, no. you've had this for quite a few years, right? Yeah, that's right. I've had this, might even be 10 years, seven years, yeah. something like that. If this was a, oh, a Weiler or a, mm -hmm. something expensive, a oh, Monarch just, or something, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that I'd want to drill holes in a carriage <laughs> to, to modify it to do yeah, this. You know, I would be calling Weiler or whoever it happened to be, Monarch or whoever it happened to be, and say, hey, do you have something I can throw on here to, 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 that just goes on the tool post or yeah. something to that effect that I can use to run this drill without doing this modification? And they would yeah. probably come up with something. Of course, it wouldn't be cheap. This is cheap. And of course, some people would say I'm cheap. So. So then we put this in here, and we put the quick disconnect in here. Of course, typically you use this for uh, putting your stops in. So we'll bring the billet up against that. And what happens too, see, you don't have any weight on the drill when it's cutting. Until it breaks through and knocks yeah. the billet off, so you don't have that strain on the, yep. on, the, on the on the drill either. So we'll get this crane here. Now that's what I'm talking about, Paul. Forge all action, baby. Then we'll put up our fancy indicating system indicate it in because we like to have it as true as possible that way we don't have to do so much turning i still love that system it's not so much slicker than the farting around with them yeah you know if you magnetic. yeah if you use the magnetic base and then you 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 you've done this you go you know and i've seen people that put two indicators on here mm -hmm. They'll have one to indicate the OD and another one that's got Hold the, the face end. this way and it's got the needle this way. Get that hook system, yeah. That's so cool. you can indicate the face without taking the stupid indicators on and off. And you go, eh, you know, this is... Uh, I know somebody that's selling magnetic bases wouldn't like that. And, you know, I would say magnetic bases, you can't get away from them either. Sure. There's uses for them. You just can't... They're just... Uh, but this, you know, this is so... It's it's simplicity, it, you know. You really want to keep things stuff as simple as possible because if you don't, it's just <laughs> there's already injected complexity when you're making parts a lot of times. Anyway, you don't want to put more complexity on top of it. So try to keep everything simple. was the grooving tool we just used. The other thing is I put this guarding on there. Sure. Try to keep the that coolant from coming on the floor here. Yeah. So what we do is pull this this way. Organize here.
This particular machine, it's nice to have a, a horsepower meter on there so you know if things are jamming up or getting clogged yeah, up, right. you can pay attention to that. I mean, if you're an experienced guy, you're listening to the machine to get a feel for what it withstands. You don't want to stall it or anything. Uh, if you had a horsepower gauge, you go, oh, I hope it's really starting to drag her down. Hard to hear it sometimes with all the yeah everything. If there's other machines in the shop running, it's, it's hard yeah. to get a feel for what's going on. It's a real chip. Yeah, yeah. You can see how it's actually a pretty uh, big, uh, impressively yeah. large chip. Oh, it's, it has the shape of that insert, yeah, that's leading right. head. Yeah, look at does. that. Oh, that's awesome. If you're cutting steel, they look like little fans. That's really cool. <laughs> so you can get an idea. Now it's cutting that on both sides. You can see where the width of the cut is pretty big. That bar looks a lot longer when you see that whole drill poked all the way in it. Yeah. <laughs> now, I heard the other insert just start to break through there. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So just like that, you got a three and three quarter hole. See, you can see how the chips come out of here. Look at that. You can pull it out? Oh yeah. Well, just like that. We have a free piece of material. Yeah. It's actually not, not yeah, light. Yeah, that's right. And of course, you, you can see, see if it was six feet long and four inches in diameter, you're talking about a lot of material. Yeah. Well, look, and you talk about a basic you know, term of running a sh machine shop, they use the word ROI, return on investment. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you got a piece of material there, and uh, Paul, how much time you think, a, a one inch drill, which still costs money, uh, yeah. and then you got 20, 30 minutes sticking a boring bar in there yeah, and taking numerous you get passes. The, well, you look out, you got great chip control, you don't have all them big spirals and all yeah. that stuff to deal with. Of course, you could use a spade drill and get good chip results it just takes a lot more horsepower to drive yep. one of them right then it would be going slower of course you can like we talked about a little earlier we you can get carbide ones but they're expensive <laughs> well um, your spade drill is still only going to be inch inch and a half max and then you've got to bore the rest yeah i uh, you know i mean it it's i, I really like this system cool. because it, it preserves the material just like we're talking about yeah. you know and um it's fast if you ask sandbit can we do that they say, maybe, you know, you have to, to ascertain what your machine is capable of doing. Uh, and I knew when I bought this drill that, uh, you know, once I modify this, you're not sending it back to Sandvik, yeah. you know. Right. Uh, well, will it work? Will the machine have enough horsepower? We go, eh, well, I think it's one of those experience-based things where you go, I think it's right on the edge, but I think we can make yeah. it work. We'll make it work. So that's, in essence... What I did was, you know, well, we'll just adapt a few things, and like sure. I said, we put the tails on there because we want to. You can't. You got to. You don't want to. Nice. You don't want a hand feed disc. You want right. a nice, even power feed. And I, if you use insert drills, yeah. they work really nice under really tightly controlled conditions, right. especially carbide stuff. It's not like a high. 
if, if you don't have any control, high speed drill is real forgiving. Well, it's interesting. We had a set, setting up a lathe and I missed, I screwed up a couple weeks ago and I had my Y axis about 15 thou off center line. I didn't realize it on our Haas lathe. And I uh, drilled the first hole with a carbide drill. It had worked fine for months to date. Didn't realize it had changed and just snapped that drill. I mean, they have no tolerance. Now this no. is a positional yeah. issue off for a center line, but that carbide likes that smooth. Oh yeah, you know it wants everything to be just so so to work. And, and when when it is that way, they're beautiful. Man, they just work so perfect. Uh, the high speed drill, it'll it'll sustain some pretty. Yeah. And that that you know that that design is I, I think uh, you know over a hundred years old, more than a hundred years old. So what do you expect? Yeah. I mean, it, it's. The cast iron is a freer cutting material compared to the 4140? Oh yeah. So that's gonna, the 4140 pushes this machine harder. That's right, okay. it pushes the machine harder. Uh, but the nice thing is, you know, Sandvik sells inserts. These are general purpose inserts. They sell inserts exactly, I mean, I'm not using specific inserts for cast iron, which would probably you might be able to push it a little harder as yeah. far as speed goes, even with the lower horsepower if you buy stuff that's designed exactly for the material you're cutting. And uh, coppers would have bought inserts for this material and that material, and they have them in your, your box, and yep. they have them written on there what the material it's designed for. And, of course, you can cheat and use the wrong insert if you run out or something like that. It's just you have to make adjustments and mm -hmm. the feed or something sometimes the chips won't break right and you don't want you want those chips to break out actually I'll be, you, know, you don't want those streams coming out of here because it'll jam this thing up right. um, yeah, is that warm no oh yeah that's not that's barely even off cold yeah yeah look at that and you can see you know all the chips it made <laughs> i mean that's yeah, just drilling that hole of course right. now how much more chips you would have had had you bored it, drilled it out, and bored all that all out, and throw it, throw it away, just to, yeah. what what came out as a slug. Uh, yeah, we use these for sell these for tramming rings. That's what this billet's for. Uh, what we do is tree pan that hole out there, and we machine it, put nice radiuses on it, so you can lay it on your milling machine table and run your indicator around there without skipping all over the place. Awesome. On your bridge, you. Bridgeport tight mills. We'll throw a link in the description to Paul's website where you can buy those. And if you haven't seen a tour of his shop, here's a quick sneak peek. But we actually had the chance to do a full tour uh, of Paul's shop and see how he runs it, uh, which is really a wealth of knowledge. So, Paul, as always, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not a problem, John. Come by anytime. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.